Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Alexey Kolchin with you, and today we're going to discuss a question posed by Evgeny Sklayarevsky, uh, our colleague from Tashkent, to his acquaintances. And the question is as follows. Voici. So, we have a brick lying on an inclined plane, for, and the question is, which half of the brick presses on the plane more, the upper half or the lower half? Well, and his friends gave all sorts of different answers. And I suggest that you also pause the video now, think about it yourself, and write your answer in the comments to this video. Now let's uh, reason through this the way we did in school and lay out all the forces acting on the brick. The first force already marked on the diagram is gravity which is applied at the center of mass. In addition, the brick will be acted upon by the normal force, which is perpendicular to the inclined plane, and by the friction force, but which is directed along the inclined plane. And usually it is depicted like this. And now the forces are balanced. But if you look closely, there is one problematic feature in this diagram, namely, the moments of these two forces relative to the center of mass are zero. But the moment of the friction force is actually not zero at all. And it turns out that the brick should start rotating in this direction, which you have to admit looks extremely strange. So how can we fix this situation? Well, look, no matter how we move the arrow, representing the friction force along the plane, the moment relative to the center of mass will be the same. So, the problem lies in how the arrow representing the support reaction is currently drawn. And we need to redraw it differently. It's not applied in the right place. And, to start with, I'll just remove both of these arrows. I'll say that the total force corresponding to them must first of all be exactly equal to the gravitational force. And secondly, be directed along the same straight line so that there is no rotational moment. Well, now we can break it down into components and say datitat. So, the projection along, the plane is the friction force, dakete, and the one perpendicular to the plane is uh, the normal reaction force. And look, it turns out that the normal reaction force is applied closer to, kind of shifted, toward the front part of the brick. And thus, we can conclude that the front part of the brick presses on the plane more strongly than the back part. We have listened to Alexei's reasoning and it might seem flawless. Indeed, this is basic high school physics. Equality, it of forces, equality of moments, everything. Checks out. But how did he make that final step? First, he drew the resultant force and then suddenly started saying that as a result, the front part of the block is loaded and presses on the support, on the inclined plane, more strongly than the back part. But how did he go from the resultant force to distributed forces? I know how to go the other way, from distributed forces to the resultant force. But on what basis was that transition made? And I have a counterexample to what Mr. Kistada just explained. Look, Park. That's only in the idealized school model, where in the textbook it's assumed that a perfectly smooth brick lies on a perfectly smooth inclined plane and touches it at every uh, point. But in reality, both the brick and the inclined plane are rough. And perhaps they don't actually touch along the entire contact surface. So, I'll assume that the contact occurs at separate points. I made an exaggeratedly uneven surface on the brick, glued it on, and now the contact happens at this point and at this point. Accordingly, I need to apply uh, the force of gravity to the center of mass of the brick. Again, and draw um, the reaction forces. So, there's one reaction force at the back point and one at the front. And since it turned out that the lever arm at the front point is longer. The reaction force here will be smaller. As a result, 
a greater force and thus a greater perpendicular reaction is applied to the back half of the brick than to the front. So that's also possible. Even though the center of mass of the brick hasn't shifted anywhere, it's still in the middle of this rectangle. So what does Alexei have to say about this? Actually, I assume that the brick wasn't as uneven as um, Andre showed in his drawing. And in this case, we can assume uh, that the support reaction forces change linearly. So their resultant is applied exactly where it should be. And in this model, it turns out that the front half of the brick presses on the surface more than the back half. But on the other hand, Andre's objections are very serious, Otoko, and we can't get an answer to this problem without specifying it further. It is statically indeterminate. So now we'll consider a much simpler problem in which we'll actually get a concrete answer. And this will be a problem about how two people carry a wardrobe. As long as they're walking on a horizontal surface, each person bears an equal load. But in our model, the movers are replaced by these scales. And now you can see that the scales each show 10 newtons. Now the movers have stepped onto the stairs, and now the load on them is different. The lower mover bears 12 newtons, that is 10 plus 2 newtons, while the upper one bears 8, that is 10 minus 2 newtons. Now let's look at the torques these forces create relative to the center of mass of the brick. Their lever arms are in a ratio of 3 to 2. The moment on the left is 3 times 8, and the moment on the right is 2 times 12. And they are equal to each other, just as school physics predicts. That's why it's harder to hold the cabinet from below than from above. Now I want to ask Alexei a very naive question, which might have also occurred to some of our viewers. Here I have a block resting on an inclined plane, and once again I mentally divide it into a front and a back part. It seems that these parts weigh the same, so they should press down on the support equally. Where am I going wrong in this line of reasoning? To be honest, Andre's seemingly naive question made me pause and conduct a thought experiment in the spirit of Galileo. But really, let's imagine that our brick is cut into two equal halves. Each half is standing on the inclined plane. And obviously, since they are identical, they should press down on the inclined plane with equal force. Now, uh, let's tie them together with a weightless connection, turning them into a single object. So how does that work? It's clear that uh, adding this connection won't change anything at all. They pressed equally on the inclined plane before, and they'll continue to do so. So why did our previous reasoning suggest that the front part would press down more? And I want to redirect this question to you, our dear viewers. Share your thoughts on this in the comments under this video on YouTube.